Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have a large book haul. There's probably close to 40, 50 books here. <laughs> Maybe even more. I don't know. But I've done a lot of book shopping. Um, mainly it was for preparation of Book Bonanza, and then I made like a few excuses here and there because I really wanted some of these books um, or I stumbled upon them in used bookstores and whatnot. So I'm just gonna go kind of free for all, just grab as I go. I'm going to have a historical romance section. So if you're not into historicals, that'll be towards the end of the video. Um, but they are beautiful, okay? So you should stick around because they're stunning books. Okay, I'm just gonna pull from the top. Servants at Spy Day by Ruby Dixon. This is her most recent release. I have not read it yet, but it is a part of her fantasy romance series. And I believe it's M-F-M-M -M -M, or it's M-M-M-F. I don't know. But it has to do with like these fantasy creatures that you've seen in this fantasy romance world that remind me, funnily enough, of like those the the witches that have like no eyes from hercules that share an eyeball like they control fate by a string these creatures basically do that these three male creatures in the fantasy world basically do that but they don't look like those witches do so don't worry they're very attractive looking okay and i think it's their romance with the servant that we've met in the series that like works in their castle i don't know what's gonna happen in here but i'm very excited and i'm glad i got like a physical copy too because i got this in time for um book bonanza and ruby got to sign it for me so ruby also got to sign this one for me this is when she's fearless this is a little novella it's one of her uh releases from this year a part of the rise of series b from mama needs to Read romance sent this book to me like she's so stinking sweet she just sent this to me like on a whim like b i love you so much i have read this novella i really enjoyed it i'm trying to collect like all of ruby's books there are books that are out of print I'm trying to find them, okay? Um, so uh, I really did enjoy this one, so I'm so happy to have it for my collection. Thank you so much, B. Next, I have The Midwinter Mail Order Bride by Katie Wilde. I love this fantasy romance book. If you have not read this one, it's really unique. Um, the heroine is going to this marriage arrangement with this uh, barbarian king, um, but she thinks like he's evil. So uh, she plans to kill him on their wedding day, but she accidentally gets like drugged with this drug that's kind of like a truth serum thing. And she basically blurts out to him right when they meet, like, I'm planning on killing you and taking over your throat. And he's like, no, <laughs> we're gonna take you back home because that's not happening. <laughs> so it's kind of like a road trip fantasy romance that is actually funny and hot. Like, I really love this one. Juniper Hill by Daphne Perry was one of my favorite books from last month. This is a single mom with like an infant baby, um, which I'm looking for more of those. Like, I want infant single parent baby romances really badly. If you have any recs, leave them down below. One of my other favorite ones is Next of Kin, which I need to add to my collection. Okay, I need to. Um, <laughs> but I really enjoy this one. It's small town romance as well. Our single mom moves to the small town for a better life. And it's her romance with like her grumpy landlord, who's also a chef. Like the food in here <gasps> was dying over it. Next, I have three books that were sent to me by the author. Um, so I'm gonna read the summaries for you because I don't remember the summaries. Uh, first one is The Do's and Don'ts of Dating a Doppelganger, a sweet romantic comedy by Carrie Monet. Oh wait, no, I do remember this author reached out to me on Instagram. I was like, the heroine may or may not also be named Ava. And I was like, what? Okay because she wanted to send this book away. Okay, it says, Ava would never move to a new town just because she met someone online, except she kind of did. As fate would have it, her mystery man, Tanner, works alongside her at the public small town clinic where she's starting a new public health program and the mutual attraction is undeniable. The surprise to Ava and everyone in town is that she's the spitting image of a Maggie St. Giles who died five years ago. And this might be a problem for Tanner who was married to her. Oh my gosh, so this girl, is like the doppelganger of this guy's dead wife. What the heck? Okay, of course, everyone in Cater Wool has an opinion about how Tanner and Ava should proceed and their hilarious matchmaking efforts create a whirlwind of emotions for the couple to navigate. Will Ava be able to put her put down roots in a community that will never stop grieving Maggie? This friends to lovers romantic comedy features a full cast of charming eccentrics and celebrates the power of love to heal old wounds. Sounds very 
cute. Then I was also sent an ARC copy of Something Unexpected by Vikeland. Um, which I was not expecting. It showed up on my doorstep. So thank you, Vikeelan. Did not know this was going to be here. This one is about our hero, um, who I don't know his name. It doesn't say it on the back. Um, but he has a grandmother who doesn't have long to live. So she has like this bucket list of items she wants to do, like jump out of an airplane and swim with sharks. Y'all know how I feel about sharks. <laughs> no. And apparently there's this woman named Eleanor who is going to be traveling with his grandmother and he kind of like voices his concerns to his grandma like, um, should you be doing all this? Um, but then she ends up blocking him <laughs> and he sees this is kind of like the last straw. He's gonna go fly out to see his grandmother. Um, but then I think he ends up falling for like her companion, Eleanor. Um, sounds messy and chaotic. I will be skipping those shark scenes if they are in the book. And then the other one that was sent to me is I Almost Do by Evangeline Williams. The author also reached out to me on Instagram asking if I wanted a copy and I said yes. This is about James and Clarissa. When your mentor makes a dying wish that you'll marry his daughter, you do it, especially when you're halfway in love with her already. Ooh, so it's like pining. Unfortunately, this marriage of convenience is anything but convenient. Clarissa doesn't know about the tattoos I had hide under my suits or my more than deep skin scars. She's too good for me, too vulnerable. When I told her I wouldn't touch her with these dirty hands, I meant it. Now I'm stuck between a rock on her finger and a very hard place behind my zipper. <laughs> Everyone says that James is ruthless, but I know the side of him that is gentle and kind. The side that will give me anything my heart desires, except the one thing my heart desires. I married dad's CFO, hoping our arrangement would turn into something real. But as long as he controls my trust fund, he thinks he'd be taking advantage of me. He's wrong. I want to be his partner, not his responsibility. And that starts with tempting him into a lot more than kissing his bride. I love marriage of convenience romances. So like when this author reached out to me, I just needed this book. Next, I found these two books at a used bookstore and they are a part of the Immortals After Dark series. I am slowly collecting this series. Every time I find a new book that I don't own yet at a used bookstore, I purchase it for my collection. I only have like, before these two books, I only had five books in the series and there's over like 20, I want to say almost 20 books in the series. Um, So whenever I see a used copy at a bookstore, I purchase it because I don't want to be paying full price. <laughs> And I've already read all of these books, so I'm not in a rush. You know what I mean? Um, I listen to all of these on audio. Like the audiobooks are freaking fantastic. If you want like the best paranormal romance series you've ever freaking read, it's the Immortals After Dark series. Like they have so many different kinds of lore creatures, faded mates galore, like it's amazing. First I have Kiss of a Demon King, which is an enemies to lovers romance between a sorceress and a uh, Rydstrom, who is a ruthless warrior who vows to keep her at all costs, but she does not want to be kept. Like. This one is really good. And I do love getting the old covers because the new covers are not really my vibe. That's another reason why I'm only purchasing them from used bookstores is because used bookstores mainly have the older, like more pretty covers to me. And then I also found Lothair, a fan favorite. This one is a, I believe he's a vampire, right? Sorry, it's been a while since I've read these books. Um, but this is like a fan favorite. Lothair is like the ultimate like villain, like that falls in love with a goody goody. He falls in love with um okay so basically there is this human woman that he finds out is his fated mate and he's like destroyed he's like i'm the most powerful vampire ever how am i fated mates to this measly little human it turns out this human a evil sorceress living inside of her um and so he's like oh my gosh the sorceress must be my mate like this human no she cannot be my mate um but it, she might actually be his mate um so you have this like inner turmoil of this girl like having the sorceress, evil sorceress living in her body and then also Lothair bugging the crap out of her. So <laughs> this one is so good. One of my favorites in the series for sure. Next is What He Always Knew by Candy Steiner. Um, I bought this book because it's in like the old cover on Amazon. This is a part of her like cheating duet thing um, where the, like it's like a love triangle thing. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but the heroine is like in love with two men basically in this do what? Seriously, she ends up picking one of them in the second book, she picks one of them. Um, but I love the people cover. The people cover for book one just doesn't exist anymore. And I am so sad. Like you have like the discreet alternate cover on Amazon and I want, I want the people cover. I even went up to her table, Book Bonanza, and asked her husband, I was like, do y'all have the people cover of book one? And they were like, nope. And I was so sad. <laughs> so I have the people cover of book two. But I don't have it for book one. I got The Doctor by Nikki Sloan, which is an age gap romance. This is a ex's dad romance that is 
very hot. A fantasy romance that I really enjoyed is Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. Um, this is like a series that is pretty much ongoing. I got a new book from her from Book Bonanza that's like later on in the series and it is ginormous. Um, but this is kind of like this one, our heroine is missing her brother. Like he's been missing for a while. She's trying to find him. And this mysterious like fey man comes up to her and is like, I can find, I know where your brother is. I can take you to him, but in exchange, you have to marry me. And so um, they kind of uh, end up having to live in essentially kind of vibes of like the Court of Nightmares and a Court of Thorns and Roses series. Um, it gives me vibes of that. That's what the Fey Realm is. And there she finds her brother. Like it's like the inner workings of this marriage. She's also like a Fey creature that's called like a nightmare, um, which she's able to find out people's nightmares and like use the nightmare against them, which I love her powers. Next is a Sophie Lark book. This is Snow. I have more Sophie Lark books in this stack, but they're at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> um, but this is my most recent uh, Sophie Lark read. I know I need to get to the uh, Kingmaker Chronicles because I finally read this book. I did. <laughs> this is an MMA mafia fighter romance situation where she's also like a doctor. I read these two books by Anna Huang and had to purchase them before I got to Book Bonanza. So Twisted Love, which is a brother's best friend romance and uh, Twisted Games, which is a royalty romance. That's also Bodyguard. You know, I'm a sucker for a good bodyguard romance. So I think I gave both of these books uh, four stars. I think this one 4.5. So I did thoroughly enjoy these. I unfortunately did not get Anna to sign these because Anna's line was so long the entire convention um so it's fine i'll meet her at a different time i'm gonna manifest it then i ended up buying the man cover of a nordic king by karina halley <laughs> i uh also have another karina halley in this list um but karina halley was supposed to be a book of manza but because of like flight conflicts and stuff like there were some storms happening around the time um she was not able to make it um but this is probably my favorite Karina Halley book next I bought The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott this is my most recent Emma Scott read I really enjoyed it if you want a low angst emotional romance that takes place in New York City like definitely pick this one up I also purchased Rush which was one of my favorite books from last year this one is so stinking good. This is like a live-in assistant. Our hero is blind and our heroine ends up being hired by his family to help take care of him in his apartment. But this hero is very grumpy and he doesn't want someone that he doesn't know living with him. Um, and he has like this pretty tortured, tragic past. So Brooklyn Air by Serena Bowen. I love this one so much. If you want a good like hockey setting romance, our hero owns a hockey team. This is his romance with his assistant that he's been like, pining after for years. I read Pestilence by Laura Thalassa with Kate over at the Book of Kate and I just needed a copy. Um, I really enjoyed this. This is a post-apocalyptic romance where she tries to kill Pestilence, um, but he can't die. And so his whole new life goal is to basically, this woman's life horrible because she tried to kill him. Like talk about an enemies to lovers romance. This is, this is it. Since my last book haul, um, I have added to my Ruby Dixon collection. Um, so uh, these are all of the new ones that I added to my Ruby Dixon shelf back there. You have Addie Ron, which is the first book in her Corsair Brothers series. Barbarian's Heart, which is her amnesia one in the IPB series. You have Fire and His Chaos, which is one of my favorite books in her Dragon Shifter post-apocalyptic series. The Heroine and Heroes and Amputee. It has Faded Mates, Dragon Shifters. It's so fun. Barbarian's Choice is Farley's book which is like the one of the only like Sukui alien females a part of the tribe um, that I love. I love Farley so much. Barbarian's Hope is a second chance romance with Asha and her mate. Um, Asha is another one of the alien females living in the tribe and she has a faded mate in the tribe, um, but like they basically are completely estranged and so this is them falling in love again. Debbie's Distraction is my favorite book in the Ice Home series. I love this one so much. You have like a nerdy, heroine and a very gruff grumpy hero. Angie's Gladiator is one of my other favorite ones, a part of the Ice Home series. Uh, Angie in here gets kidnapped by aliens, um, but when she wakes up from this like cryo sleep they put all the women in, um, she's pregnant. And she was not pregnant when she was kidnapped. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of like craziness going on in this one. And my last Ruby one for this stack um, is Willa's Beast. Um, which is another one of my favorites from the Ice Home series. It's Faded Mates. Willa in here, you have like a Southern charm girl um, falling in love with this 
beastly looking alien. Lessons in Corruption by Jonah Darling was a book that I purchased in preparation for Book Bonanza because I wanted to read it before I went there. That ended up not happening. Um, I got her to sign it, but I did not read this one. I read Welcome to the Dark Side and I love that book. So I wanted to start over and read book one. This is a motorcycle club romance series, the first book in it by Jenna Darling. It's a, like a fan favorite series. Um, and it is a student teacher relationship where the heroine is older and is the teacher. Um, but I don't think too much older. I don't know. Teacher student romances are a little bit like iffy for me. So we'll see if I end up liking this one. I hope I do because I bought it. <laughs> I saw Jess from Peace Love Books haul Queen Charlotte, uh, the novelization of it, and I needed it. Like, I think I saw her post about it on her story or her Instagram, and I was like, uh, that exists? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm absolutely obsessed with the Queen Charlotte TV show, so I needed this book. We'll see if I ever read it. I was supposed to read it last month, but I don't know. Some people have told me that the book isn't as good as the show, so... Um, I don't know. It might just be like on my shelves as a statement piece because I'm obsessed with this cover. I'm obsessed with these characters. I'm very glad that I bought this because I freaking love this TV show so much. It's like a new obsession for me. Next are those Sophie Larks that I said were going to be in this stack. Um, I finished my collection of the Brutal Birthright series in the man covers. Um, so these are not sold on Amazon anymore. You have to buy them from her website. And I think it's like first come first serve. She's not printing any more of these, I don't think. So you can only buy them off of her website. And when she's out of stock, like I don't think she's printing anymore. Um, so I didn't have these editions. I did not have Heavy Crown, which is the last book in the series. Um, and I also didn't have Stolen Air and uh, Bloody Heart. Uh, so those are now in the Brittle Birthright stack. I also don't own the man cover of Savage Lover, uh, but I own the female cover of it, um, so it's fine. It's okay. Um, we're just gonna keep that one too. <laughs> I purchased these two books by Chloe Lee since my last book haul, um, The Mistletoe Motive and If Only You. This one is her newest release, which is a fake friendship romance. That's also a sports romance where both characters play sport. He plays uh, hockey and she plays soccer. I love that aspect of the book. And there's autism representation and celiac disease rep. Um, which are both own voices. And then The Mistletoe Motive is her little like holiday novella that I did not have an edition of. And when I saw it was live on Amazon that you could get it, like I, I, I snagged it up, obviously. Um, but this is a short little holiday read um, with autism and um, type one diabetes representation. Oh, here's my other Karina Halley book. I also purchased The Wild Air, um, but again, I did not, I was not able to see her, um, but that's okay. I love this one so much. Uh, this one and A Nordic King are probably my two favorite books by her. Um, this is a like a arranged marriage situation um, that is very hot. It's really good. Man in Love by Laura Lynn Page was a book that I did not own yet before going to Book Bonanza. Um, so I wanted to meet her. So I had to complete the duet. I did receive book one, I think for Christmas this past year. Um, and so I needed book two to complete my collection. I then have The Ippos King by Grace Draven. It's going on my Grace Draven shelf up there. Um, this is the third book in her Wraith King series, which is the same series that Radiance takes place in. Um, but this is the romance between Saravek and Anuzet. She is our fantasy creature and he is a human and you have this amazing banter filled relationship. Oh, it's so good. I love this book so much. Um, I need to reread. I've only read this book once and I've read like the main duet like a billion times. So I need to reread this one. I feel like a reread is very due. Um, but I had to buy one of her books because Grace Draven was recently diagnosed with cancer and I wanted to support her and hopefully fund like give a little bit of money to her to hopefully fund her treatments and everything. So I ended up purchasing The Abyss King because I did not have it yet. And then I also bought this little book. This is Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. This is a YA book. Um, but one of my favorite YA books is Sorcery of Thorns, which is a uh, YA fantasy read. Like it's really fun. I really enjoyed it. And so I saw this at my local bookstore, not local, it's in the next town over because there's no bookstore in my small town. Um, but this is actually a continuation of their story, like the, the couple in that YA book. Um, and it's also signed. And I was like, it's a signed copy. I need to get this. I love the main book. Like we'll see when I ever, whenever I read this, I know the audiobook is on Libby. And so I can listen to it if I want to. Um, but look at this cover. It's just so pretty. Do not pass this book up. Like I needed to have it. Oh my gosh. There's a little cat imprint. If you know, you know, there's this cat in here. I absolutely love him. 
I love him so much. He also may or may not be a demon this cat demon. We're in my historical romance little section. So I ended up finding Angel by Johanna Lindsay. Um, look at this. I guess it's a Western. That's all. Like if you didn't know, I bought probably most of these just because of the step backs. Okay. That or I love the author. Um, so I collect Johanna Lindsay books. This was my first hardcover of hers. Um, but I had to get it because of the back and I've never seen this book before, so I needed it. I found The Princess and the Barbarian by Benita Cron. It has like a metallic-y cover, um, and this step back. Found this Suzanne Enoch. It is titled Always a Scoundrel. This step back reeled me in. When there's a naky, naky man, like, I'ma get it, okay? I'ma get it. That's why I own a lot of Johanna Lindsay's, because she got a lot of naked men. <laughs> covers and I love it. Okay, next is The Bride's Bodyguard. I really like the step back in this one, but also when there's bodyguard in the title, I, I will pick it up without even reading the summary um, because I love me a good bodyguard romance. Then I found these two Lisa Kleypas books. Whenever I find a Lisa Kleypas edition I do not own, I, got, I get them. Um, so this is A Season for Love and this one is Falling for You. My only thing is like, okay, this book has two books in it like this copy this has married by morning and love in the afternoon which are the last two books in the hathaway series in like a bind up but then this one has mine till midnight and a wallflower christmas in it and mine till midnight is a part of the hathaway series and then a wallflower christmas is a part of the wallflower series so i don't get why they combined these two books if they're not even in the same series Riddle me that, I don't understand. Anyway, I saw these editions and like, I don't really like these covers. I don't, I don't like what they're doing with like the new covers for historicals, like making them look like this. But when I see Lisa Kleypas books, I have to buy them. It's a sickness, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh, I about died when I saw this book. This is Untamed by Elizabeth Lowell. This step back is one of my favorite step backs ever. And when I saw that it was in this store, I needed it because look, at the beautiful pink and you have a naked man also like i'm obsessed with them i love them if i could display this on my shelves i would but my mother comes in here all the time so i also found this one which is one i've been wanting for a while because people love this book this is yours until dawn by teresa medrios i believe this is a beauty and the beast retelling where the hero is blind please correct me if i'm wrong um but i've heard really good things about it and i love teresa medrios's step backs like she always does a two page step back and they're absolutely stunning. I own a few of her books and I feature them on a lot of step back Saturdays. I found two books in the Maidenland series by Elizabeth Hoyt that I did not own yet. And I only buy books in the Maidenland series if I'm able to find them with a step back. If they don't have a step back, I don't want it because I know all the books in this series have a step back. So I'm biding my time like every time I go to a book, used bookstore I look in her section to see if they have step back so I found Duke of Pleasure which has this step back another author that makes sure to have two page step backs that are absolutely beautiful look at his back I love I love looking at good men's backs like yes and then also Lord of Darkness which is book number five in the series has this step back I really need to go back and read more of the main lane series. I've only read books seven and eight, I think. I also found This Earl of Mine by Kate Bateman. I found a Kate Bateman book that I've read, but I didn't own yet. And so I picked this one up. I think this is, is this the Jewel Thief one? I don't know if this is the Jewel Thief one, but it's part of that series. Um, but I have read all the books in the series. And so I only owned, I think book three. And this is book one or book two, I don't remember. I found Never Love a Cowboy by Lorraine Heath. It has the flowers, it's about a cowboy. It has the, the little spur on the side and then this step back is everything to me. I love it so much. I also found um, Love and the Single Heiress by Jackie D'Alessandro. Sorry, that name is confusing for me. Um, with this beautiful step back with the bed and the canopy. I'm a sucker for step backs. Like I cannot, I cannot help myself. When we went to Dallas, we also went to a like half price books event, like our first night there on Wednesday. And I found some books at half price that were not a part of the event. But I, I went shopping regardless and I saw these and I needed them so badly. So the first one is a Johanna Lindsay that I did not own yet. 
This is Once a Princess with that step back in it. Like, are you joking? Yes, like all the lily pads and the water, like stunning. And then I found these four books in the Hathaway series that have step backs in them. Like what? <laughs> and I think I already own, cause I'm right now I'm missing, oh, they're out of order. Um, I did not haul book number, I think it's book number three, uh, Tempt Me at Twilight. I already own that one as a step with a step back anyway. So now I own the whole freaking series with step backs in them. So I'm about to show them off. Book one is Mind Till Midnight. This is one of my favorite like historical romance series ever. I love this series so much. Book number two is Seduce Me at Sunrise. Book number, I think this is book number four, uh, Married by Morning. And lastly, book number five is Love in the Afternoon with this step back. So those are all my historicals. And then I'm quickly going to go through all the books that I ended up hauling at Book Bonanza or were pre-orders at Book Bonanza. I know I already did a Book Bonanza haul, but mentioning them in this video, like, like makes more sense in my brain to also mention them because it's not in my last like book haul book haul. You know what I mean? It's, it's for me. Me talking about these books again are for me. I'm just going to quickly go through them. I pre-ordered all of these books from Ruby Dixon's table um, that are all signed. All of these books, and I'm about to talk about all of them are signed. Um, you have uh, book number one, Bound to the Battle God, and book number two, Sworn to the Shadow God. The first two books in her fantasy romance series. I have Worst Guy, which is an alien romance with like talking about like clones and stuff um, with a bad guy, a clone of a bad guy, but he's ended up being a good guy. Anyway, I love that one. You have uh, The Aristiverse Tales bind up there. I think four novellas in this bind up. When She Purrs is book number three, a part of the Aristiverse series. Present Plan of Barbarian is like a prison set romance, which was so good for how short it is. Like, I love this one. And then I also pre-ordered Audrey's Resonance, which is her first book in the Ice Planet Clone series. And then while I was there, I had to buy the two Beth Bonanza special editions, The King's Minster Bride and The Half Orcs Maiden Bride. If you wanna see me show off these books, you can go check out my book Bonanza haul down below. I didn't pre-order anything from Candy Spiner, um, but when I saw these two books at our table, I needed them. Um, I've read this one. This is On the Way to You, a road trip romance that I didn't hate. I don't like road trip romances, but I actually did enjoy this one. And then Say Yes, I snagged it up because I know that this one has disability representation and I need it. I think this one also takes place in the 90s. Like she wrote the book like in the past, which I think is cool. Then I got The Kingmaker by Kennedy Ryan, which I got at that half price book signing. This was like our ticket in is you buying one of these books, like pre-ordering one of them. And um, I know nothing about this book. I can't wait to read it. I'm so happy that like Kennedy signed on to uh, be with this like publisher. I hope that like makes amazing things happen for her. The two books that were in our like Book Bonanza swag bags, you have the Pawn by Sky Warren and The Unwanted Marriage by Katharina Mara. I pre-ordered these two books from Katherine Cowles. You have Hidden Waters and then Fractured Sky, which are book three and book five in her Tattered and Torn series. I did not own these two books and now I have a completed collection. I also pre-ordered Highest Bitter by Sarah Kate, which is her latest book in her Salacious Players Club series, um, which I know that this one is like an age gap romance like a oh, big age gap. Then I also hauled this book. This is Dirty Filthy Billionaire by Laura Lynn Page. Um, she was giving these books like for free if you went to her table. Um, so I went to her table and said hi to her and she was like here have this book and I was like oh my gosh you don't have to pay for it? Like I would I'd buy it anyway but like give it to me now. I don't even know what this is about but like her assistant was like hyping it up to me and I was like Say less, I, I'll read this one. Then I have Keep Her Safe by QB Tyler, um, which is her recent release, which is a bodyguard romance. I have not read this book yet, um, but bodyguard romance, again, bodyguard romance. I need it in my life. I've never read QB Tyler, but I'm hoping that I love this one because like it sounds so good. Here is my other KJ Sutton book I talked about. This is Beautiful Nightmares. Um, which is I think either book four or book five in her fantasy romance series. Look how big this book is like compared to the one the first book in the series that I hauled. I pre-ordered this one. Uh, meeting her was such a dream. She was so sweet and man I wish I could have bought the other books in the series too but I went to her table on day two and she was like all sold out of everything which 
good for her. My last stack of books that I'm gonna talk about today are all the books that I got at Emma Scott's table. Um, really fast, these are the ones that I pre-ordered. I pre-ordered um, four books and then I saw these other three books at our table and just needed them. Um, so I pre-ordered Endless Possibility, which is a little novella that takes place after Rush, which is a book that I hauled earlier in this video, which takes place after that book that I just, I loved it. Then I pre-ordered the exclusive edition of Between Hello and Goodbye, um, which is her like Hawaii set romance. I have not read this one yet, but I've heard amazing things. And then I also pre-ordered uh, The Sinner and The Muse, which are her like paranormal or fantasy, I don't really know, um, series. I just, you see a guy with wings, you get it. And then I think The Muse is also an MM romance. I didn't know that, but um, they look really good. Like I cannot wait to read these. I've never read a paranormal by Emma Scott. I've only read contemporary, so I think it's gonna be amazing. And then lastly, I got these three books at her table. I saw them and <laughs> needed them. I bought um, A Five Minute Life, which I saw this cover and I was like, I will take that please. <laughs> um, I don't know what this is about, but like, look at how stunning. I just, I need it, I need it. Um, and then I also bought this duet. This is Bring the Stars Down and this is Long Live the Beautiful Hearts, which I think this is a love triangle duet situation. Emma Scott hits it with her duets. Okay, so I needed them. They were sitting there. I needed them. There you have it. Those are all the books that I've hauled since my last book haul. It's a lot. I know. I will be on a heavy book buying ban. I'm not buying any books for a while. <laughs> um, I think, um, I don't know if I'm going to stick true to that. I may let myself buy one book a month. We'll see how I feel, um, but I will not be going to any bookstores. I will not be buying any books off Amazon. Wait, that's a lie. I just bought the first two books in Elsie Silver's um, Chestnut Spring series with like the people covers on them because those are going out of print. Okay, those are going out of print. So I need them before they go out of print because I don't want like the covers without the people on them. So I'm buying those. I bought those. Those are be coming in the mail in like three days. Um, but other than that, I have not bought anything else. <laughs> if a book... It's like exclusive or it's going out of print like that'll be an exception okay anyway i'm making exclusive for myself for spending too much money thank you all so so much for watching let me know if you have read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the book stack emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i'll see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all